Hello and welcome back to the safe combination tutorial for Empire part 3 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So now to fix the problem we're having with the dial image being offset to the right and to the bottom by the transform, we're going to make sure that we are offsetting it to the opposite direction instead. And that is going to make sure that it's going back into its original position. But since I found it quite difficult, or rather impossible, to actually move the transform instead of the sprite into the opposite direction, we are going to have to move the actual dial sprite instead. And by doing so, we are also going to have to update this collision detection up here in this if statement to take into account the offset that we are applying to the dial sprite. So now let's go ahead and first of all offset the dial sprite. And to do that, we're going to need a new variable that is going to refer to this offset value. And that is so that we can use this variable everywhere in our script where we need it. And then if we want to change the value that it refers to at any point, we can just change it in one place in our script instead of having to change it everywhere else as well. So to do that, we're going to scroll back down into the start label. And in the dial variables section, we're going to create this new variable. And we're going to call it dial offset and the value that I have found works good for this is 68.2 like so and then we'll go back up into our init python block and then we're going to create a new line underneath this dial sprite set child line right here and then we're going to say dial sprite dot x is equal to and then we're going to say config dot screen with divided by 2 and then minus dial size at the index of 0 to grab the width of the dial and then we're going to divide that by 2 and then we're going to say minus dial offset. So this calculation right here is the same as we did earlier on when we first created the dial sprite and positioned it on the screen but this time we're just making sure that we are subtracting the dial offsets value from that calculation to make sure that it goes back into its original position. And now we are going to do the same thing with the y-axis. So we're going to duplicate this line. And then we're going to say dot y. And then instead of screen width, we're going to say screen height. And then we're going to grab the height of the dial. So we're going to swap this zero for a1, like so. So now we're just going to make sure that we are updating the relevant parts of our code to take into account this offsetting that we just did. And as I mentioned before, one of these places is going to be this collision detection right here. So to do that, we're going to make sure that we are adding the dial offset value to this calculation right here, which is checking if our cursor is within the dial sprite on the x-axis, and on this section right here as well, that is checking if the cursor is within the dial sprite on the y-axis. So for that, we're going to say, plus dial offset, like so, and then the same after here. So we're going to say plus dial offset, like so. So now the collision detection between the cursor and the dial sprite is going to be where the actual image of the dial is, rather than where the actual sprite is located. And then we are going to do the same thing over here, where we are calculating the angle. So for that, we're going to add the dial offset just after this dial size. So we're going to say plus dial offset and the same here, plus dial offset, like so. Now we also are going to need to be able to determine whether or not we have already rotated the dial at least once or not, because if this is the first time that we are launching the game and we're clicking on the dial in order to start rotating it, then the transform instead of the dial sprite has not yet been offset. So in that case, this collision detection right here is not going to work correctly. But if we have already rotated the dial at least once, then this collision detection is going to work correctly. So in order to make this sort of distinction, we're going to create a new variable that is going to be either true or false, depending on if we have already rotated the dial or not. So let's go back down into the start label. And then here we're going to create a new variable in the dial variables section. And this we're going to call dial start rotate. And then this is going to be false as the initial value, like so. 
and then let's go back up and in here we're going to add another if statement underneath this if event button is equal to one so we're going to say if dial start rotate and then we're going to indent all of the code that comes underneath this so from here to there like so and then we can go ahead and copy the selection that we have and then we're just going to create a new line underneath this last line and then go inwards twice in the indentations so one two like so and then we're going to say else and then inside of this else statement we can paste what we just copied like so and then we're just going to make sure that we are removing the dial offset from the collision detection so like that and then like that so now if we have already started rotating the dial at least once then this if statement is going to run with the code that is inside of here but if we haven't already started rotating the dial at least once before then this else statement is going to run instead now we just need to make sure that we are setting this dial start rotate variable to true once we have rotated the dial so for that we can go ahead and create a new line just underneath this line right here where we are rotating the dial so for that we're going to say dial start rotate is equal to true like so now let's also make this variable into a global so we're going to create a new line on the a and then say global dial start rotate now there's a few things that we are going to have to correct here so when we are calculating the angle right here instead of this first if statement right here we're going to say minus the dial offset instead of plus so we're going to change the plus to say minus like so and the same here and then instead of this else statement right here we're going to remove the plus dial offset altogether as we don't need it for this so we're going to remove that and then remove that like so so now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this will look like so now let's go ahead and try to rotate the dial and see what happens so as you can see that does seem to work indeed now as the dial is staying in place when we are rotating it but we can tell that it's moving a little bit fast when we're moving the mouse so this is going to be a little bit tricky to get the correct values that we want from it also because it's moving so fast with the mouse you can also see that it won't really snap to each of the increments of the dial but what we really want to happen is for the lines on the dial to align perfectly with the white guideline on top of the dial to get more accurate and precise results so we're going to go back into the code and implement that now now to make sure that the dial is always going to rotate in certain increments to make sure that the lines on the dial are always aligned with the white guideline we're going to modify the rotate property for the transform right here so instead of saying that the rotate property should be equal to the rotate amount attribute of the dial sprite we're going to add a calculation that is going to make sure that it is snapping to 3.6 increments so it's not going to move by one pixel every time we move the mouse but rather 3.6 pixels so that calculation is going to look like this first of all we're going to add two round brackets around this dial sprite rotate amount like so and then inside of here we're going to add divided by 3.6 and then we're going to round this so we're going to say round in front of these two brackets and then in front of this round we're going to say 3.6 times like so so this calculation right here is going to make sure that the rotation of the dial is always going to occur in 3.6 increments so now we're going to make the dial a little bit slower when we are rotating it so that it's not going too fast and to do that we're going to go back up here to the rotate amount variable and for this value right here we're going to divide it by 5 to make it move slower but you can of course test different values to divide this by to see what you think works best but for this video we're going to go with 5 so we're going to say divide it by 5 like so so now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like so now let's go ahead and rotate the dial and as we can see that does seem to be working indeed as the lines on the dial are aligning perfectly with the white guideline but another thing that we can see 
or I'm not sure if that's going to translate very well in the video, is that the dial seems to be also shifting slightly up and down as we are rotating it. And that can actually be fixed by using the subpixel property of the transform. So let's go back into the code and fix that now. So to make the dial rotate a little bit smoother without shifting up and down, we're going to use the subpixel property of the transform. So we're going to create a new line underneath this line right here. So we're going to say t dot subpixel is equal to true, like so. And now let's go ahead and launch the game again to see how this looks like. And let's go ahead and test it now. And as we can see, the dial is now staying in place instead of shifting up and down. So we know that that is working correctly. So now let's go back into the code and see what else we can do. Now we're going to create some more code that is going to help us to show the actual value that has been selected on the dial on the screen. And for that, we're going to need to create two more variables. So we're going to scroll back down to the start label. And then instead of this dial variables section, we can go ahead and create these two new variables. So the first variable we are going to call dial number. And this one is going to have an initial value of zero. And then the next one we're going to call dial text. And this one is also going to have an initial value of zero. And then we're going to scroll back up into the init Python block right here. So first of all, let's go ahead and see what the value for the rotate property of the transform is actually set to. So for that, we're going to create a new line just underneath it, like so. And then we're going to say dial text is equal to t dot rotate, like so. And then since we are changing the style text variables value, we're going to need to set it to a global. So we're going to create a new line up here. And then we're going to say global dial text, like so. So now to actually be able to see what this text is on the screen, we're going to need to create a new text displayable, and we can do that down in our save puzzle screen. So down here. So we're going to create a new line after this image button. And then we're going to say text. And then instead of these two quotation marks, we're going to add two square brackets. And then add the variable instead of that. So we're going to say dial text and then we can give this a black color. So we're going to say color and then hash symbol and six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to align this. So we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0 0.505 and 0 0.18. And then we're going to make sure that the text inside of this text displayable is aligned in the center. So we're going to say text align 0 0.5, like so. But now to make sure that the dial text variable is going to display the correct value, we're going to need to restart the interaction. So we're going to scroll back up into the init Python block right here. So after we have assigned a new value to this dial text variable, we're going to need to restart the interaction. And we can do that just underneath this last line right here. So we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to say rampi dot restart interaction like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So now we can see that we have a piece of text available up here on the screen. And we can see that it is set to the initial value of zero. And now if we rotate the dial one step clockwise like so, we can see that the value that is being shown is 3.6 and that is because the rotate property of the transform is rotating by 3.6 increments. And then if we rotate counterclockwise instead, we can see that we get the value minus 3.6 instead. But this is of course not really what we want to have displayed on the screen, but we want the text to actually represent the value that is selected on the dial. So if we select the value 10, for example, like so, we don't want it to say minus 36, but rather 10. So in the next part of this tutorial, we're going to continue by fixing the value inside of the text displayable. So I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.